This video is sponsored by Audio. You can get a year subscription of music and sound effects for just 59 bucks. Link below. Seamless zooms like this in and out. They look great, but they're a bit of a faff to create in DaVinci Resolve. That's why I've made a tool which does all of the hard work for you. This is my seamless zoom or magic zoom tool and it's available right now for free. Let me give you a real quick demo. So check it out. It's as simple as drag and drop. Now I've got a seamless zoom on this adjustment clip. It'll zoom in and zoom out. We can make it longer or shorter and it will keep zooming in and zooming out as required. We can give it a click, choose the position we want to zoom into like so. Even go to effects and change the animation curve, the scale, add motion blur and even camera shake all without messing around with keyframes and it literally takes seconds think how much time this is going to save as mentioned it's completely scalable you can make it as long or as short as you need it to be it's completely customizable all of the options are easy to access within the inspector it's available for the free and studio versions and it will work on any resolution including vertical timelines and any frame rate winner now, as mentioned, it is free to download, but if you can contribute so that I can continue making this sort of thing, then all donations are greatly appreciated. So with that out of the way, let me show you how to download it, how to install it, and how to get up and running. So first things first, click the link down in the description below to take you to this page. This is my seamless zoom tool for DaVinci Resolve 18. Then there's the option, how much would you like to pay? Enter how much you'd like to pay into the box and then simply hit get now. Once you've been through checkout, there'll be an option here to view the content. Give that a click, and then you can download the Magic Zoom v3.drfx file. Once that's downloaded, you'll end up with this. This is a DRFX file. It will have a slightly strange file name, but don't worry too much about that. It's all good to go. To install, we're simply going to double click, and this is going to open up DaVinci Resolve and ask us if we want to install the tool. So it's asking us if we want to install Magic Zoom. We're going to hit install, and job done. So it's all downloaded and installed, but before we get into it, let me just take a moment to thank this video sponsor, Audio. Audio is a music subscription service with a highly curated selection of awesome music and sound effects. It's all handpicked by the guys and girls over at Audio. And you can get that Audio Pro license for just 59 bucks for the first year, which gives you unlimited downloads of all of our music and sound effects. And you're not just covered for YouTube. With that pro license, you're covered for pretty much any project you like, from TV and films to video games and even podcasts. Simply head over to audio.com forward slash Alex. There's a link in the description below, and then use the code Alex70 at checkout. Winner. All right, let's get back to it. So here we are on the edit page within DaVinci Resolve. Now you can apply the effect directly to footage on your timeline, but it's much easier to use an adjustment clip. So open up the effects library, top left hand corner, then click on effects. The very top you'll see adjustment clip. Grab that and drop it on your timeline above your footage like so. Using an adjustment clip just makes it much easier. You can move things around, scale them, cut them, duplicate them, all that sort of fun stuff. Once that's on there, go back to your effects library, expand effects, click on Mr. Alex Tech, and within this list, you'll see Magic Zoom version three. Grab that and drop that on your adjustment clip. Then if we simply hit play, wherever that adjustment clip is, it will zoom in and then zoom out. And again, we can move this adjustment clip wherever we want on our timeline. If we hold Alt and then click and drag, we can duplicate it to duplicate it wherever we want. That's why using an adjustment clip is so handy. If we make our adjustment clip as long or as short as we want, the zoom will scale accordingly. To change the point that you're zooming into, the easiest way, underneath your preview window, there's this small little drop down. Give that a click and then select Fusion Overlay. On screen, you'll get this icon. Simply give it a click, hold your mouse, drag it around, and you can choose the point that you're going to zoom into. So I'm going to zoom right into this cheeky chappy's face. And then if we hit play, that's where we're zooming into. To access the rest of the controls, they're all in the inspector. So make sure your adjustment clip is selected on the timeline, click on inspector in the top right hand corner, and then click on effects. And you'll see your magic zoom controls within here. At the very top we have version, which we'll come back to in a moment. Then we've got zoom type. There are four types available. We've got a standard, which is a slow zoom in from start to finish, very similar to our dynamic zoom. We then have a zoom and hold, which will zoom at the beginning, 
hold its position and then just do a hard cut at the end. We have the reverse of that, which is a hold and zoom out. And then we have a mirror. The one you'll use most often is probably mirror. That will zoom in at the start, hold, and then out at the end. Next, we have pivot. Pivot simply moves the point that we're zooming into, but we're using the inspector controls rather than the on-screen controls. It's actually generally easier just to use the on-preview controls. Then we've got curve. This controls the actual animation acceleration, the animation curve. By default, it's set to easing. Most people will just want to leave it as easing, and then you can customize these ins and outs. It's a simple drop-down list. Just have a play with these. The general rule of thumb, as you go further down the list, the more aggressive these are going to be. So if you want a really subtle thing, change it to maybe the top one, and then hit play. And it'll be nice and smooth. If you want it much more aggressive, let's try one of the lower ones down. And it'll be much quicker and much more aggressive. But have a play with these. You can't break anything. Just experiment and see which ones you like. If you do want to create a custom curve, you can change the curve to custom, and then you get this custom graph. So you can click that, do what you'll want with this, make a completely custom curve, and it will just animate it on the way in and on the way out. But as I say, most people want to leave that as easing. You've then got zoom scale. This is how far we're zooming in. So if we increase that, we're going to zoom right the way in like so. To reset any of these figures, you can simply double click to go back to the default. The zoom scale can even be set to a negative number. So then we have a zoom out instead. The offset is the starting position. So if we wanted it to start sort of zoomed out like so, and then zoom a bit in, we can do like that. The zoom speed is the speed of the zoom. Now this is more of a duration. So at the moment it's set to two. If we increase this, that will actually slow the animation down. If you want a faster animation, just bring this to a lower number like so. If you've done a zoom out and you've got these black edges around the area like so, you can amend that in this edges control. By default, it will be canvas, but we can change it to wrap, duplicate, or even mirror. I actually want to reset all of these options, so I'm just going to click on the big reset button in the top right hand corner. And now we're back to our standard mirror. Underneath there, we have motion blur. Now, motion blur is pretty taxing. It will chug a little bit, so please be mindful of that but we can increase some motion blur. So now we have a nice bit of motion blur on the zoom in and zoom out. Obviously, we can also increase the shutter angle, which will give us more motion blur. And the more sort of zoom scale and zoom speed, the more aggressive the zoom actually is, will result in more motion blur as well. And then lastly, we have camera shake. So if we expand the camera shake, we can see all of the camera shake controls under here. The motion scale is how much movement you have within your camera shake. And then the speed scale is the speed of the shake. So I'm going to give a fair bit of motion scale, just a small amount of speed scale. Now, if we hit play, when it's zoomed in, we get this camera shake effect. This is really cool if you've got a locked off shot and you want to give it a more dynamic and more handheld sort of look. We can just add a little bit of camera shake and job done. Now you have all of the camera shake controls within here if you want them. It can get pretty complicated, but feel free to dig in, mess around and do whatever you want with these. Now I have made six presets for you at the very top. So if you just go through one to six, these are just general presets which I've made so you can have a play and experiment with different controls within this Magic Zoom. Versions five and six do have something else clever going on. These actually have a path. So number five has this big S curve. And what it means is as it plays, it will zoom in, but it will also follow along this path. Now this path is completely customizable. So if you want to move the ends, you can just click on them and move them around and you can change the curve. You can even delete these points by simply clicking on them and then hitting delete. If you're familiar with paths within Fusion, if you right click on any of the points, you can go to the path polyline and you have all of the path controls within here. Version six is the same thing, but it just has a real nice pan. So if we hit play, it's going to zoom in onto the left and then slowly pan over to the right and then zoom out once it reaches the end. And again, we can give that a click and we can just customize it to do whatever we want with this. Again, have a play, go mad, see what you can come up with using the magic zoom tool. But can I create my own presets? Yes, you can. And it's really quite simple. Let me show you how. So to create your own custom preset, all you need to do in the inspector with the magic zoom, just go to any or even all of these versions and customize them to whatever you want. 
So if you don't like version one, just change it, change the amount of zoom, the zoom scale, the pivot, all that sort of fun stuff to get it exactly as you want it. Once you're happy with one or all of the versions that you've created, click on this small icon in the top right hand corner. It looks like a magic wand. That will take you into Fusion. Now, you don't need to do much in here, so don't worry too much if you're not familiar with Fusion. If you look down at the bottom, you should see this magic Zoom V3 node. Give that a click. And again, the inspector will pop open. You can continue to customize any of the versions within here if you need to. Now we just need to save it and then re-import it back into Resolve. So what we do, we find the magic zoom in the nodes and we right click and then we go to settings and then save as. Then find the location on your computer to save this file. Now this doesn't need to be anywhere in particular, just somewhere that's easy to access. I've simply made a new folder on my desktop and I'm going to pop it in there. Now before you save it, make sure to give it a custom name. So I'm going to call this one custom one, magic zoom v3 custom one, whatever you want to call it. Then simply hit save. Now stay within Fusion, within DaVinci Resolve, but outside of Resolve, I'm just gonna open up that folder so I can see my magic zoom v3 custom one file here. Then within Fusion, open the effects library, top left hand corner, expand templates, expand edit, expand effects, and then click on Mr. Alex Tech. Then Grab that file and just literally drag and drop and place it over here within that Mr. Alex Tech area. And that's it. If we go back to the edit page now, within the effects Mr. Alex Tech area, we now have our original Magic Zoom V3, but we also have Magic Zoom V3 Custom 1. So let's get rid of Magic Zoom off this adjustment clip and we can drop our Magic Zoom V3 Custom 1 on there and off you go. So you can create presets for these and each preset contains six individual versions. So you, so you can build up loads of variants of your Magic Zoom V3 so you'll always have a seamless zoom for any occasion. Winner! And that's it. That is the seamless Magic Zoom tool for DaVinci Resolve. Thank you to everyone that has donated already and anyone that is going to donate in the future. If you've got any thoughts or feedback, let me know down in the comments section below. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.